From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. I'm Jonathan Ambarian at the state capitol. Montana lawmakers are expecting a big budget surplus for the next legislative session. And that means you can expect a big debate over how that money should be used. In Gallatin County, I'm Kristen Merkel, and coming up, the Bozeman Swim Center's future may look a little brighter than expected. I'm Joe St. George in front of the Embassy of Saudi Arabia in Washington, D.C. President Biden is set to visit the kingdom. Why is his visit so controversial? Why is the relationship between the countries so complicated? We'll break it down next. All right, it is 6.30 on this Thursday. Chalina and Matt Elwa with you there. Not a speck of cloud. No, it look it's like a, a community it, hospital of Anaconda. I can't it's a beautiful morning. The temperatures mm -hmm. holding into the 50s is pretty uniform across the area. The mm -hmm. afternoon. Uh, right on hot. cue, another, yeah, fairly hot and a mm -hmm. few isolated thunder showers. Most of the area temperatures into the 50s for the region this morning. The afternoon does promise the potential of some scattered thunder showers, mainly in the southern part of the viewing area, but I wouldn't be surprised to see a shower uh, trying to form out toward Butte as well. Um, we'll be watching things over the next few days. The temperatures are really the uh, mainstay. Make sure that you're hydrating, drinking plenty of water. The afternoons may provide a little natural uh, water for you in the form of a shower or a thunderstorm. We'll talk more about your uh, long-term forecast coming up in just a little bit. Mother Nature's Flash Park. Yeah, all right, 631, uh, our top story this half hour. Montana leaders say the state has seen a big increase in revenues in the past few years, meaning there could be a significant budget surplus when the next legislative session begins. As Jonathan Ambarian reports, Democrats and Republicans already splitting on what should be done with that money. With state tax revenues on the rise and leaders predicting a big budget surplus for the next year, lawmakers are already starting the debate on how that money should be used. There is plenty of grain in the grain bin, and it's time to give that grain back to the people who put it there in the first place. At the state capitol Wednesday, Democratic lawmakers said they're expecting a $1.7 billion general fund balance when the next legislature starts work on the budget. And they laid out a plan for spending $1 billion of that. Much of it would go toward addressing the costs of housing, including investments in building affordable homes, a one-time property tax refund for working Montanans, and keeping property taxes below a set percentage of families' income. They also propose grants and pay increases to expand access to child care and community mental health treatment. We need to do it now. We need to start working on these policies. And our vision is that we invest in our communities and we put the money that's sitting in the bank idle right now to work for our constituents and for our communities and for our economy. Democrats are currently the minority in the legislature, and several of these proposals are based on ideas they've offered unsuccessfully in previous sessions. Majority Republicans are also preparing for a surplus of well over a billion dollars. GOP leaders say it's a sign the policies they've implemented have been working. We as Republicans know that um, our citizens trust us to manage our economy. Republicans say they'll make tax relief a priority when considering how to use the surplus. That could include some form of property tax help. Certainly, we hear from our constituents every day uh, regarding uh, taxing uh, and the hardships that they endure because of the high taxes. So we'll be discussing uh, tax relief in multiple forms. In June, the Legislative Fiscal Division told lawmakers the state has seen extremely strong revenue growth in the last two years, but they're projecting revenue will decrease in 2023. Legislative elections are now less than four months away, and the start of the 2023 legislative session will be in less than six months. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. Uh, closer to home this morning, in late May, the Bozeman Swim Center abruptly closed down after an inspection found it was structurally unsafe. Sam Tan's Kristen Merkel reports many people are worried about the future of the pool. I'm here at the Bozeman Swim Center that's been closed since May. And although the community is upset, the future of this swim center and others looks bright. You may have seen these signs around town. Save our pool, a grassroots effort expressing frustration with the recent closure of the swim center. We highly use the, the swim center pool, so it's been really inconvenient to have it closed. Many organizations and clubs have had to move due to the closure, and the city of Bozeman is hearing the community loud and clear. Since the 
the pool closed, we, we very much understand uh, the disruption that this is causing for our local swim clubs and, and the community at large. Uh, and so for the last several weeks now, we have received uh, a number of public comments. Bozeman residents like Janiel Bergman are upset that their kids have no place to practice. Brokies and the Barracudas have done things on the side to try and figure out what to do for practice and keep active, but it's been really difficult um, to keep up the swimming practice without the Bozeman pool. Although there is a lot of frustration on the pool's closure, the future of the swim center is looking bright. So we are confident at this point that we'll be able to find a solution. We're going to be working over the next uh, month uh, to finalize designs uh, in order to provide drawings to uh, a bidding uh, community and hopefully find a local contractor who's willing to, to take the job on. Along with the high potential of the swim center reopening, the city of Bozeman is also discussing the potential of another facility. Once we are able to find a solution and reopen that swim center, uh, we are going full press on uh, a larger facility on the west side of town, uh, which we're hoping to bring to the voters uh, next fall. Uh, Bozeman City officials say they're working hard and understand the frustrations of the community. We, we fully understand the disruption and, and anxiety that this has created within the community and we're working tirelessly to exhaust uh, every opportunity and option. In Gallatin County, I'm Kristen Merkel, MTN News. On the national scene this morning, President Joe Biden's visit to the Middle East continues today, but tomorrow the president's most controversial stop will take place as he visits Saudi Arabia. So why is the presidential visit attracting so much criticism? Our Joe St. George helps you understand why a presidential visit to Saudi Arabia is no ordinary stop by speaking to those who have been impacted by the country the most. Most of the time you probably don't think much about street signs. They're often named after states or places. Sometimes it's just a letter. But every now and then a street sign catches your attention, like the decision in Washington recently to name this street, right in front of the Saudi Arabia Embassy, Jamal Khashoggi Way. Khashoggi was a Washington Post columnist who wrote critically of Saudi Arabia's government. He was murdered in 2018. And even though Saudi Arabia denies ordering the killing, last year a U.S. intelligence assessment concluded the country's leaders were directly involved. Unique street signs in front of embassies is just one example of how complicated the U.S. relationship with Saudi Arabia has become and how controversial President Biden's visit there is to so many. I feel, to be honest, uh, betrayed. Abdullah Aloda helped reveal that new street sign recently. Jamal Khashoggi was a friend. But he is better known as being one of the biggest critics of Saudi Arabia in the United States. He was born in Saudi Arabia and his father is currently in prison there for speaking out on Twitter. Almost 13 million followers. Abdullah says President Biden campaigned on making the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia a quote pariah for human rights violations, which include public executions and little to no free speech. This visit violates that promise, he says. Abdullah does hope, though, President Biden accomplishes something by going to Saudi Arabia. He gets it. Saudi Arabia produces a lot of the world's oil, but this visit must address more than just gas prices. At least there should be clear human rights concessions from uh, the Saudi government. President Biden, for his part, knows his visit is controversial. It's why he wrote this Washington Post column. I know that there are many who disagree with my decision to travel to Saudi Arabia, going on to say, as president, it is my job to keep our country strong and secure. And to do these things, we have to engage directly with countries that can impact those outcomes. Saudi Arabia is one of them. Biden's and national security advisor, things. Jake Sullivan. We have to work on increasing the prospect for peace in the region. As for Abdullah. I myself have been threatened uh, many, many times. He says at the very least, he hopes more people are now understanding just how controversial his native country is and why President Biden's visit is no ordinary trip. Those who killed our founder and friend, Jamal Khashoggi, and wanted to silence him will never prevail. In Washington, I'm Joe St. George. Back here at home, all across the state, people were talking about strange lights in the sky Tuesday night. Dan's Tom Buchanan spent the day at the Montana Learning Center to find out more about the fiery streaks in the sky. If you were lucky enough to stare up at the stars a few minutes past 10 Tuesday evening, you may have caught a pretty rare sight of space debris burning up in the Earth's atmosphere. But if you weren't so lucky, you have the camera set up behind me right about there to thank for the video of the event. This multi-camera observation dome set on one of the Learning Center's observation sheds caught the impressive sight. The brighter part where it starts off, 
um, you, you know, know that's, that's the main, main portion. portion. Okay. Okay. And then that main and portion that just main starts portion to, to just break up to, and then to you break know, up. You get pieces and that are then, just you know, scattering you across the sky. Ryan Hanaho, the executive the director sky. of the Montana Ryan Learning Hanaho, Center, the executive director of the Montana Learning Center, says that the debris that many saw flying from the southeast area of the western Montana sky towards the northwest area was the remnants of a fuel tank from a Russian rocket. That rocket was actually used to launch a satellite into space around 10 years ago. After fulfilling its duty, it was left to orbit. After a decade of freefall, the fuel tank made its final descent to Earth, traveling approximately anywhere from 18 to 20,000 miles per hour. So it's in a constant state of freefall, and you know, those things eventually do come back and they do come down. So, you know, fortunately for us, you know, entered the Earth's atmosphere over Montana, so most of western Montana saw it. Those who had the opportunity to see the fast-moving debris were pretty amazing. It was kind of show-stopping. It was that neat. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, uh, that uh, story burning up in the atmosphere as well there. So, uh, a Russian fuel tank, that's what that was that we saw in the sky, burning up before it reached the, uh, the, the surface. All right, we're going to take a